Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash, and this is Kenshape. Kenshape is a 3D asset making tool. It creates 3D models by extruding them from 2D images, which you actually create using the built-in painting tool. As such, it is very easy to create 3D models without having to have knowledge of software like Blender. Kenshape was made by Kenny, who is the creator of literally thousands of video game assets and other tools like Asset Forge, and is available on itch.io for $3.99 USD. So today I want to walk through the features and look at included samples, and then we'll make our own images and create 3D models from them. If there's any trepidation or ambivalence or hesitation, don't worry. I'm here, and I'm going to help you through all of that. So the first thing you'll see when you open Ken Shape is this menu. It allows you to select the size of your canvas for your new image that will be making the model. Alternatively, you can go to your three line menu and you can actually load an image or you can open a Kenshape file. And you can import an image up to 64 by 64 in size. So for new images, we have 16 by 16, 24 by 24, 32 by 32, and 64 by 64. This little information flag says that exporting and saving might take longer depending on your hardware. We're gonna be painting on the canvas that we select. So we're gonna start off simple and choose 16 by 16, voila. Just to kind of conquer the menu over here, besides your typical open, load, and save dialogs, you've got a configuration. So I wanted to show you that really fast. You can change the UI scale. I had to bring this up to two and it doesn't go any higher, but this basically makes it easier to see all of the different UI elements. Uh, it can go down to one or even 0.5, but if you're using a 4K monitor like I am, you're gonna want this at two. And you can also select between dark canvas and, and light, but uh, we're, we're, we're just good, honest citizens. We, we use dark mode. 16 by 16 in pixels isn't very big at all, but keep in mind that will only influence the size of the texture file associated with our model if we make one. More on that later. We can scale our model to be as large as we want in our game engine of choice, so the size of the canvas is related more to the potential file size of the model due to its complexity, its geometry. So we see our 16 by 16 pixel grid right here in the center of the screen. To the right is our color palette. Note that there are only 16 colors here. However, in the upper right, there is a button to import our own color palette as well. But according to the documentation, you can find new color palettes on low spec. So this is very compatible with the color palettes on low spec. You just download the ping image at 1x scale and that file will be compatible with Kenshape. So may I direct your attention to the left? You may have guessed that we'll be able to draw on this canvas using a sort of square tool. You'd be right, everything is pixel perfect. But we also have shapes that we can apply to our brush. So we have a straight edge. We don't have to have jagged pixels. We have bezier curves. We have round corners of circles. We have points. We have inside and outside corners. We have whatever this shape is. You can actually rotate these shapes in 90 degree increments by using the scroll wheel of the mouse. And that is how we will be able to make all four corners of whatever thing it is we're trying to make. And you actually don't have to click on the tool every time too, which makes it super easy. All right, up at the top, we have the pencil, which takes all of these different shapes. We have a line tool, which can take any of the shapes as well. It will not go diagonal. It'll only go horizontal and vertical. And then we have the fill tool. So the fill tool only takes the solid square, it seems, instead of filling up each pixel with the chosen shape, which is just just fine, in my opinion. I don't need it to do that anyway. Reverting back to pencil, we have a couple other options up here. We have horizontal mirror and vertical mirror. So if you choose vertical mirror and you draw on the right side of the canvas, the left side will draw at the same time. You draw on the left side, the right side will draw at the same time. And horizontal mirror does exactly what you thought it would do as well. I don't know what that is, I just made something random. So this comes with sample images. Let's load something. It comes with all these dot ken shape files. So we'll go ahead and click on the top one, bottle potion. That is beautiful. So we've got this image right here in the 2D editor. I could do stuff to it, but instead of changing this in any way, I can see that it's a great visual representation of a 2D, perhaps potion bottle, perhaps mana bottle, perhaps poison. Let's click on something down in the bottom section of the screen. We have drawing, which is where we are now. We can click on depth. And here we have 
the representation in the lower left screen of the 3D model. It gives us a, a sort of quarter carousel boomerang animation. Right here in the center of the screen, you can see that our grid has numbers in it now. And the right side of the screen, our brush colors have turned to numbers. These represent depths. So it's very easy to grab one of these numbers, say a five, and go down to the bottom and replace all of these fours. And you can see how that will affect the bottom of the image. It now juts out because it has more depth. The higher the number, the more depth. In other words, the further away from the center of the model, this, this mesh is now going to be extruded. I actually really liked how that looked before I changed it, so I'm going to put the threes back there. At least I think they were threes. And if you really want, you can use the fill and line tools up here for the depths as well, so you can cover entire areas. We have three more options up here in the upper right that were not in the drawing tab. We have generate based on luminosity, generate based on color index, and generate based on... what is that? Is that also color index? I can't tell. Let's go ahead generate based on luminosity. What does that do? That changes the model in the lower left. It does make it not ideal because now our cork in the bottle is different. So this may be suitable for a very particular kind of model that you're trying to work into a, a workflow in order to get them done fast, prototype them quickly. Let's generate based on color index. That <laughs> That makes it very chunky. That makes it very thick. It is no longer a potion bottle. This last one, let's try that out. Oh, that's... Is that random? Is that what that is? I think so. I think that's random. The other two, not random. They seem to apply the same formula. Either or. Changing that back to a two, it's kinda, kinda back to where it was. So now we can go to the model page, and we can see our model, and we can actually drag it and get the full 360 view and up here is a bit more magic we actually have control of the scale of the excru extrusion the extrusion it's excruciating so we can go from 100 percent all the way up to 400 percent and in this way we can kind of make boats i'm not really sure you can kind of do whatever you want but this takes care of that limitation the the depth limit of eight it's just that it scales the entire thing out, not just one particular number. Let's bring that all the way down to 50%, and our model's looking much flatter. And then we can get it up to 100% again. Leave it alone, right where it was. You can also switch the depth alignment. You've got three different alignments here. It's kind of like saying left justify, right justify, and center. So if you're interested in creating models that way, you can work with one side being completely a flat surface and then this is, will actually be the center uh, away from which the values and the depth will extrude. So one extrudes just one block away or what would be like one voxel block. This is much easier to look at and think about if you've played Minecraft I suppose. And then eight comes all the way out here. But we'll do a uh, center justification. And now, the real magic of this program is the export settings. I mean, the whole thing's pretty magical. It's pretty awesome. I just made a, a, a bottle model with no effort at all. I didn't have to paint it. Um, I'm going to be painting here in just a bit. But we can export this as model image or voxel. So exporting as model, we have the OBJ file type, the FBX, DAEs, GITFs, GLTFs, STLs, so you can 3D print, and JSON. And the reason we have a uh, JSON file type is so you can actually export your creations to Minecraft JavaScript edition. No joke. Image, we can export as ping, SVG, or GIF. I say GIF because I'm a civilized man. And you can change the actual size and pixels, as well as the background color. Uh, the reason that we might want to export as GIF is because this is going to be animated. You'll have a frame rate. If you decide to export as a GIF, you'll have an animation, and the animation will be, we'll actually test that. So we just save that to the desktop. Let's take a look at it now. Okay, it's a 360. So that's super cool. This actually lends a lot of value to the program because you may decide that you want to make models and then make some sort of UI that represents this model. So not only do you want this potion out in your game world, you might want some sort of animation or icon that you can show on your player's toolbar. And it would have this picture of this spinning potion. Something like that. 
it's really cool that this does this for you. It's just a few more seconds and then it's an, an entire step done. All right, so then the last export type is voxel, and this will allow you to further edit this file in a voxel editing program. All right, so now that we have done that, let's actually go back to drawing. We have a moped. Check that out. Somebody made this moped. A spaceship, this one is on the uh, page, I believe. So this one's, this one's impressive and it's really, really cool, but I have seen it before. A uh, fantasy sword. Now this is kind of the thing that I wanted to make, so too bad it already exists and it already looks better than what I was going to make. A floppy? Oh, a floppy disk. Gotcha. I know what these are. Oh yes. There's the little data protection switch. Very nice. Kenny is showing their age. And here, here is just an entire house. How about that? Here is a model of an entire house. You could easily just color fill the wall and the roof and maybe the door and have yourself all kinds of different houses for your game just boom 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 knocking out all these models yes there's a simplicity to them uh, so i just tried to use the load image function and use my youtube profile picture it did not work i don't know why it was a square image it was 64 by 64 it's too bad i do find it interesting that it sort of changed my color palette to 32 colors. It is missing some colors from the actual image though, so maybe that's a feature that doesn't work 100% of the time. That's okay, we're gonna go back to looking at samples. Here is a shield, it's a nice looking shield. Nice buckler. I was interested in seeing the bow, and there it is, a nice recurve. I really like it, this thing is awesome. All right, I am no pixel artist, but let's see what we can do. Ah, and to delete pixels, you just right click on the square, and you can also right click and drag. All right, looks like an accurate representation of me. We want to give this guy big nose. There, you know, that's not, that's not as terrible as it could have been. Oh my god, I've got two faces. I'm like that one Pokemon. Why is only one of my eyeballs? I need to fix that. 150% extrusion, let's export. We're gonna export this as an FBX, and that's it. I really want to do a separate video kind of showing what models from this program look like when they are used in other game engines, and so I will definitely be doing that. I'll put a link to the software in the description below, as well as a link to Kenny.nl, where you can find literally thousands of assets and a handful of very useful tools. This is especially a good tool if you are planning on entering my game jams, uh, the one that I have going on right now, the Returners Jam, you can use this with Smile Game Builder. I have verified this. And since the jam is for games as well as assets, you could make assets with this and enter the jam. You could make assets with this, put it in your game, and then enter the game in the jam. You could do whatever you want. But these are good ideas for those of you who are struggling with getting a resource for your own original assets. Alright, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day, and until tomorrow, bye for now.